the state of Assam is a melting pot of different ethnic societies. This community which resides on the bank of Brahmaputra River is blessed in many ways because Brahmaputra is itself a very blessed river and most coastal societies have a very rich civilization around the world. Muslims are very logical when it comes to God. But they are very emotional when it comes to the Holy Prophet A Muslim can argue reasonably and logically about the existence of God. However, when it comes to the identity of the Prophet, the existence of the Prophet, a Muslim cannot be completely be logical or say intellectual about the Holy Prophet. I have to admit that I perceive the person of the Holy Prophet wasalam, in an extremely emotional state. With all respect to the academic seminar intended in this institution, I can only share my thoughts about him in a very personal nature. The Prophet is a social reformer, as our Prince has just mentioned here. He was a leader. There were wars fought under his leadership. He is a, a politician, maybe a military leader. It's all true historical. But for me, it's the very person of the Prophet that has always inspired my thoughts about him. The Prophet who was like a child heart person, a great leader who would approach the small child and ask him about his small toy, about his pet bird. A great humanist who not only showed his love towards human beings, but a great animal lover who fought for the rights of a, uh, the child of a deer, a gazelle, which was hurt because he could not see his mother. A family person, in middle of all his political and spiritual duties, he would find time to raise with his wife. So this is the kind of prophet that sometimes I think we need to reread the personality of the prophet as the heading of today's topic. A prophet who in all the spiritual duties he prescribed to his followers, he would remind them as much seriously about a dental health. You know, dental health, oral hygiene is a huge part of the Islamic spiritual way of life. A prophet who would command his people to make use of their free time for even making sports activities. This is how we need to reinvent our approach to the Holy Prophet A prophet who would encourage poetry. If you ask what is the position of poetry in the prophetic way of life or his worldview, there were two stands or two podiums in the mosque of the prophet. One podium was to give religious lectures, the so-called khutbah in the, on the Friday prayers. The other stand or other pulpit was for a poet to recite poetry. The Prophet would encourage the po poets and poetesses, even if they were non-Muslims. We need to find the art lover in the Prophet, who encouraged poetry and other art forms, singing. A great secularist, who allowed the Christian delegation to pray in his mosque. But this is a time when we have collisions, frictions between faith communities. So he was a spiritual secularist, who prayed for the entire humanity. He did not distinguish between the welfare of one community from the other because he could see humanity in one single light. He did not shy from showing love to the other faith people. So this is how we need to perceive or try to understand the history, the life and the times of the Holy Prophet. We need to take the Prophet in our lives. Prophet is not the leader of Muslims. That is a huge misunderstanding. He is not the property of Islam. The Holy Prophet is the common property of humanity. You may agree or disagree with the faith that he brought. That is not a matter of compulsion. However, we need to identify and learn, imbibe the values that he brought to humanity. Of love, of fraternity, of peace, of forgiving. Justice figures very heavily in the Prophet's life. Not 
pro Muslims, but rather which was critical of Muslims' actions. It was the same prophet of Islam who said, if you oppress the non-Muslims, the minorities, the weak people in your society, then prophet is warning the Muslims that I will fight in the name of that oppressed person. I will be the advocate, I will be the wakil for the oppressed. So, my dear friends, we are all awaiting very scholarly pieces here from different scholars who have come here. I just want to conclude with one thing. The very nation that today we are living in is called India. And India comes from the Arabic word Hind. The very word Hind is an Arabic word. From Sindh it became Hind and today we have India. So the word India itself is a derivation of an Arabic word. And the Arabic department has hosted this beautiful seminar. And this very prophet once said about our India that he feels a cool breeze coming from India. So the holy prophet honored the land of India, the land of Sindh, the land of India about that he is feeling there is a cool breeze of love coming from this, this land. He named this country at that time during his life. Uh, an Indian being a Muslim and today standing in Assam, a program conducted by the Arabic department, I think uh, this is the greatest moment of pride that I can have in my life. So.